By chapter 44, it's time for them to go back. Joseph is still playing tricks, big tricks. This time, not only does he put grain in the sack, not only does he put all the money in the sack, but he puts his own personal cup, cup, a very, very valuable silver cup, in the sack with Benjamin's money with, and, and with Benjamin's grain. In the early morning, verse 3, they were all sent away with their donkeys. When they got out of the city, Joseph told his own men to follow them and to ask them why the cup was taken. Now, um, let me just say this. Sometimes something happens to us and we think it's terrible. We think it's proof that God doesn't love us. We think it's proof that we're under a curse or that we have bad luck or that nothing good is ever going to happen for us. I'm sure Benjamin thought that. When Benjamin discovered that the, the cup he thought was stolen was in his sack, he must have thought he was cursed. But he wasn't cursed. He was loved. But he didn't know it. He didn't know what the cup meant. He didn't know that the apparent bad luck was actually the sign of great, great favor. When the men arrived, um, they say, when the men catch the brothers, they say, why are you returning good for evil? Why did you take Joseph's cup? It's a cup that he actually uses to discern things, to divine things. You've done the wrong thing. So they come to the men. They ask them this question. They said, we didn't do that. We couldn't have done that. And if anybody did that, let them die. If you find the cup in any of our sacks, let that brother die. So uh, when they lower the sack to the ground, they, found the, they find the cup in Benjamin's sack. Now, think about that. Now they think they're going to go back without Benjamin. And they're going to have to explain to their father why Benjamin is not with them. Now they all feel cursed. Verse 13 says, They tore their clothes. Each man loaded his donkey and they returned to the city. It says in verse 14, When Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house, he was still there and the dream is fulfilled again. They bow down again. This is the fourth time they have bowed down before Joseph. This is the fourth time the dream is fulfilled. Joseph says, what have you done? Did you not know that I'm able to practice divination? I'm able to discover things. I'm able to practice discernment. So Judah said, what can we say to my Lord? What can we speak? How can we justify ourselves? God has found out the iniquity of your servants. Now we are your slaves. It's interesting because Judah knew, or he, well, I think at this point, Judah thinks maybe Benjamin did steal the cup. They don't know for sure that he didn't. Benjamin is the only one who knows for sure that he's innocent. So verse, verse 16 is a very important verse because Judah says basically God has shown how sinful we are. Does Judah mean God has shown that Benjamin is sinful because he's a thief? Or does Judah mean, even though maybe Benjamin didn't do this, we're all great sinners? Maybe Judah's thinking about the sin against Joseph. 
Maybe Judah's thinking, you know, it really doesn't matter if, Jude, if Benjamin did not do this because we've done a lot of other bad things that we weren't caught for. In the early 19th century, there was a great man at Holy Trinity Church in Cambridge, England, where the great university is. His name was Charles Simeon. He actually had the same name as Jacob's second son, Charles Simeon. During that generation, there were very few ministers in the Church of England who believed the Bible. Simeon did believe the Bible and he did preach the gospel. And Holy Trinity Church, because it was at Cambridge, the seat of one of England's two great universities, Oxford and Cambridge, it was a church that many pastors wished they were in. They wished to lead that church, but they weren't leading the church. Charles Simeon was leading the church. And Charles Simeon was preaching a different gospel, the true gospel, different from other men in the Church of England. And Charles Simeon was hated. Charles Simeon was attacked. Charles Simeon was the subject of vicious rumors and accusations which were not true. Charles Simeon's response was this, these things my enemies are saying about me are not true. But there are other sins in my life which my enemies don't know anything about. So it's okay. It's okay. So I don't know if Judah believed that Benjamin took the cup. But I do know that Judah understood that those brothers were guilty of lots of other bad things. And therefore, he says, you know, God has shown, God has discovered that our iniquity, our sins, and now we are your slaves. There's nothing we can do. We belong to you. Joseph says in verse 17, oh, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't need to keep all of you. I don't need to punish all of you. All of you are not my slaves. It's only the one who had the cup. He's got to stay with me as my slave. The rest of you are free to go back to your father. Verse 18, Judah comes to him and he says, let me please say something to you. Don't be angry at me because I want to talk to you because I know that you're just as high as Pharaoh and I know I have no right to talk to you. Uh, but he says in verse 19, you ask us, do we have a father or a brother? We said to you, we have an old father and a little child of his old age. Now his brother is dead, so he alone is left, meaning Joseph is dead and Benjamin alone is left as the child of the same mother. So you ask us, you ask us, bring him down to me so I can set my eyes upon him. So, but we told you, the lad cannot leave his father. This is verse 22. The lad cannot leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father would die. But you told us, unless the youngest brother comes down with you, we would not see your face again. <clears throat> Thus it came about when we went to talk to our father about this, we told him what you said. Our father said, go back and get us a little food. But we said, we can't go back if our youngest brother is not with us. This man is not going to talk to us. He's not going to let us see his face unless our youngest brother Benjamin is with us. Your servant, my father, said to us, You know that my wife gave me two sons. One went out from me, and I said, Surely he's torn into pieces. Of course, he's talking about Joseph. I've not seen him in all these years. Now you want to take this one from me, and if anything bad happens to this one, this Benjamin, then I will be in grief and sorrow for the rest of my life until the day that I die. Now, therefore, um, if I go back to my father, who is your servant, and if I say the lad, Benjamin, the youngest 
brother is not with us, you need to understand that the life of our brother is just like the life of our father. If our brother's not with us, that will kill our father. When he sees that our brother's not with us, he'll die. Therefore, we brothers, your servants, will, will kill our father if we don't take Benjamin back with us. Because we became surety, we became insurance for the lad. I told my father, if I do not bring him back to you, then let me bear the blame forever. Now therefore, okay, listen to me now. Listen to me. This is one of the most important things in the Bible. We have to understand what is happening here. This is just as important as what happens on Genesis 22 when Isaac is offered to God as a sacrifice by Abraham on Mount Moriah. I would say that, Genesis 22, and this, Genesis 44, are the two most important things in the book of Genesis. It's very easy to read this story ten times and not to see this. It's very easy to read this story a hundred times and not to see this. But you have to see it. Listen to what Judah says. Verse 33, please let me stay here instead of the boy. Let me stay here instead of Benjamin. Let me be your slave and let him go home with his brothers. Because if I go home instead of Benjamin, it's going to kill my father. That's what he's saying. Now, do you know what that means? It means that Judah has been redeemed. You see what's happened? What happened 13 years earlier? Judah said, I'm going to go home free. Joseph is going to go to Egypt as a slave. It's going to break the heart of my father, but I don't care. I don't care. Now what is Judah saying? He's saying, Benjamin is going to go home free. That'll make my father happy. I'm going to be a slave in Egypt for the rest of my life, but it doesn't matter. I don't care because even though I'm a slave, my father will be happy and my little brother will be free. You see what's happened? Judah has been redeemed. Judah's character has changed. Thirteen years earlier, he was willing for Joseph to be a slave and he would go free. Now he's not willing for Benjamin to be a slave. He's willing to be a slave so that Benjamin can go free. Even a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at tvsseminary.com.